hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is jimaima on today's series we are going to talk about viva for the medical students viva is an examination where your oh, we can actually call it an oral exam where your examiner sits and asks you questions and you're expected to answer them confidently and accurately so um, i'm going to tell you about my own viva experience by the grace of god i was able to have two viva experiences both the distinction viva and the general viva so this video series is for viva and i will start from talking about my general viva experience and my distinction viva experience then i will now give you tips on how to pass through and skill through viva with the least possible stress so if that's what you're here for let's get on with the video okay so for general viva i really don't know how it's done in your school but in my school um you it's according to either surname or a matric number depending on the course for my anatomy anatomy was based on surname but for physiology and biochemistry it was based on matric number so it you're usually called a uh, serially usually what is done is that you are called out you put on your word uh, let me not say what coats do it's still called lab coats in preclinicals so you put on your lab coats you dress if your school have a uniform like my school we are usually required to put on our white and black uniform you're supposed to appear nice and decent for the ladies your hair that's not the time for you to go and make yellow hair or white hair or green hair or red hair try i'm not saying it's wrong to do this kind of hairstyles i'm not saying that there's a laid down rules that you shouldn't do that but just try as much as is within your power to appear as decent and responsible as possible because you are not sure of whoever will be your external examiner because there must be an external examiner for that viva if it's a professional mbbs exam that you're writing and many a times there are usually two external examiners so you're not sure of which particular external examiner is going to examine you they could be someone they, sh they could bring someone who is deeper life and when you come appearing with red hair red lipstick yellow li eyeshadow and all those crazy crazy stuff the person may have a wrong impression about you and it probably may reflect on whatever score the person would give you so i would advise please try as much as you can to appear responsible like me I, I did not want to do any color of hair i just went with my natural hair if you've not seen my full vlog my full series on my professional bbs exam please go and see it i'll put the link up for you guys so that you see how like i just didn't want stories that touched the heart i know i say this statement a lot but that was just my plan so i made sure i went with my white and black with my lab coats ironed like i legit went to <laughs> i legit went to dry cleaners to for them to iron it proper ironing because i just wanted to appear as um, neat and responsible as possible another thing is that you need to read wide for viva these external examiners are not your lecturers they are not the people who taught you so they may likely ask you questions that are outside what your lecturer have taught you or they may likely expect you to answer in a certain way and when you don't give them you know sufficient information on the qu whatever you've been asked they would assume that you don't know it not knowing that is that you've not been taught and it would be very very bad of you to be asked a question and you tell your external examiner sorry sir i was not taught or sorry ma i was not taught or you say i don't know <laughs> the person can just tell you get out from this place so it's good for you to just make sure you do your own best it's not enough for you to study what you've been taught you also need to know what is within your course outline i really don't know about your school but in my school it's very unlikely for the lecturers to be able to finish teaching everything that is in your course outline is very unlikely so you can't come and explain to external examiner that it is in your course outline but the lecturer did not teach you you are supposed to know it you're supposed to learn it on your own if your lecturer did not teach you so prepare to answer questions outside what your lecturer have taught you or outside the norm like for example if you're talking about the heart like i would always go down to anatomy if you're talking about anatomy of the heart even though your lecturer only taught you about the chambers of the heart the blood supply the venous drainage if the lecturer did not teach you innovation of the heart 
and then the external examiner asks you something about the heart and you don't see anything about innovation of the heart you you're more likely to lose the score for it because how is a uh, external examiner expected to know that you were not taught about the innovation of the heart you are supposed to know it so those are little i'm just using that an, as an example i'm not saying that is what's obtainable i'm not saying that is what you must do but whatever is in your course outline learn it another tip that i have to tell you guys about is discussion my god i don't think this is the best time for you to open textbook and open notes to be reading you know, because <laughs> discussion like try as much as it's within your power like what i did let me tell you about what i did because what i did may not actually work for you but what i did was i did discussion i tried to discuss with my classmates i tried to discuss with my colleagues and to make matters worse i was sick throughout that period so i wasn't able to study this is where background knowledge will help you seriously if you are being asked a question on a spot and it's something that you crammed you may jumble it up you may forget it completely that's why i will never ever support la cram la po in medical school because this knowledge needs to be built up you need to start from the basics and keep on building it till you graduate for example you learn your biology you learn your physics you learn your chemistry in your 100 level then you get to 200 and 300 level you learn your anatomy you learn your physiology you learn your biochemistry this, these things are still based on this biology physics chemistry basis that you learned in your 100 level so if you forget 100 level work it will be difficult for you to understand what to be taught in your preclinicals and if you forget this, these basics, the uh, anatomy, the physiology, the biochemistry that were taught in your preclinicals, when you get to clinicals that you're, you're facing the pediatrics, the OBGYN, you're facing the uh, microbiology, facing pathology, pharmacology, when you don't have a strong preclinical background, it will be difficult for you. So I would not support LACRAM, LAPO if you're preparing for viva try your, as much as possible to understand the concept because you may come and read out a big spit out whatever you've crammed to the external examiner and the external examiner may just pick up one particular statement that you've made and will expect you to explain it what will you do when you tell the examiner sorry my i crammed it or somewhere why how will you hi i wish i can get a particular video to, to show you guys so that you understand what i'm trying to say uh, I'm presenting a 24-year-old neonate. Uh, a 24-year-old neonate? What's a neonate? Uh, You're saying 24 years old neonate? A neonate is a younger baby doctor. A younger baby? Uh, These students okay. nowadays. Uh, doctor. Like, like, okay, first, can you relax? <laughs> like, imagine you you crammed a 24-year-old neonate. How can a neonate be 24 years old, for God's sake? That's what happens to you when you cram. To try as much as possible to it's well like those whose re matric numbers or reg numbers or surnames fall down the list try as much as is within your power to go there at the appropriate time because i would not advise you go there in the morning when everybody is going keep in touch with your classmates keep in touch with your colleagues that are there so you would not stress yourself unnecessarily because to me it makes no sense to leave your house seven o'clock and go there and sit down there till 5 p.m when you would have easily strolled in there like a boss at 4 p.m another thing i'm going to tell you about is confidence like i know this will be very difficult because um jumping into viva is, would be your first um experience so like i would not say you must be confident but one thing i know i had was confidence so if there was any question that was asked i answered them all with confidence you know when they ask you something that you know and you're having double mind about it and you're like ah, i don't know or yes i know i know the lecturer can assume that you don't even know it but there's a way you will answer something confidently that even though you don't give the lecturer details that details that they are, the examiner is looking for they will assume that ah she knows it but almost you can meet one conk lecturer that can keep on pinning you down with whatever statement that you made so you have to be careful of your choice of word during your fiver all right guys the video was too long by tomorrow i'm going to upload the distinction viva version of this video come back tomorrow and i remain your girl jemima bye